good. I am Jay Mills. And I am Dana. And this is Jana After Dark, episode... 17. Bang. You was on point. You've been on point lately because I've been, I've been slacking a little bit. Sometimes. How you feel? I'm good. I got to make sure I tell you you look good because these last couple episodes you've been banging on me lately. I just like, I just like bothering you sometimes. But you look nice. Got your good eight Aren't nine hat on. Aren't orange, you? yeah, you know, orange is my favorite color. <laughs> so my baby be knowing how to make me feel good sometimes. But <laughs> sometimes, you know, some sometimes, sometimes you you take me there, you know. But shout out to eight and nine. Make sure y'all head over to eight and nine dot com yes. if y'all like Dana's hat. You know what I'm saying? That's an exclusive eight and nine situation right there. Nine. Yes. Uh, you can use our code Jana twenty. Get your twenty percent off. Yes. And all that. Uh, Taking orange into the fall. Yeah, that's how we doing it. You know, I rock orange all year round. This is true. So do I. I rock orange all year round. Um, shout out to everybody in San Diego. We had to reschedule the show. Um, yes, unfortunately. Due to unfortunate circumstances. Not not we didn't cancel the show. We just had to reschedule the Postpone. show. So shout out to Milky Wayne. Yes. Uh shout out to Sham Black. Shout out to everybody in San, San Diego. Diego. Um we're gonna make sure we still come out there and that's gonna be the first show on the tour. That still. We still do. Yes. Still, still. So we're still doing it. Still definitely doing it. So yes. um, And we have a few other places in mind as well. Yeah, definitely. So been a lot of things going on. Been a lot of things going on. <sighs> Where do we want to start? Where do you want to start at? We can start with power because I was sad oh to see it leave. Um, I'll start by saying that is still and will always be one of our favorite shows that we watch from beginning oh to end. Oh my God. Um, yeah. All the spin offs we watched. The spin-offs. Spin-offs. <laughs> the spin-offs. Spin-offs. <laughs> spin-offs. Um, but this particular one ending kind of threw us a curveball. Um, well, first, let me say, I just, Kinda. I just wasn't excited about an ending. That was the first thing. <laughs> and I love power. It hurt, man. It hurt to see them go. I feel like we watched Tariq grow up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that I have one, one thing, though. We always call him Tariq, but then there's other people that call him Tyreek. My mom's and my brother, shout out to Mac, shout out to Mama Millsy. They call him Tyreek. But there is people on the show that a few times I've heard them pronounce it. Hurricane hit him with the t- skinny nigga Tyreek. Tyreek, but I always thought it was Tariq. So please somebody correct us <laughs> from Power Universe, correct us just to start with. Yeah. Um, But I do feel like we watched him grow up. And I do feel like it was a character that we grew to love, whether you loved every every moment, every growing pain, you hated him for a minute, you was mad at him for a minute, you wanted to discipline him for a minute, and then you was proud of him for a lot of the decisions he made as he got older, um, for holding down his family. <laughs> so it was a lot of highs and lows, but we grew to just be, have an attachment with Tariq over the years. Mm-hmm. And I was just really sad to see it go. And I didn't want it to see it go like that. And it broke me. Problem, I felt my lips chat. Okay. You know what? It broke me. It broke me. I'm not going to lie. It broke me. When you say it broke you, do you mean like it broke you in a way? Because I feel like both of us was frustrated when we found out this was the last season, right? But were you frustrated more with... Um, the fact that power was ending or ended, or was you more sad and frustrated with the fact that you know that it could have ended ten times better? Um, I want to. I think I was more upset that it ended because I still feel like they're gonna do something else with it. Because I'm not gonna spoil it for people that didn't watch it. But the way man, spoiler alert! Nah, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> but the way it ended, they left it open ended, so it could be picked up with another spinoff or <sighs> something else. But it, it, we've took it, we've taken it so many places. But at we this can point. still take it more places. No, no, no. See, I want to have a real conversation. All right, look, if you haven't seen the final <laughs> episode of Power yet, the the Power the Ghost book with. Tariq and, and Mary and Meth and all of them. If you have not seen that last episode yet, 
skip and go to the next chapter. Trust me, I edit these episodes. I edit these <laughs> episodes. I edit this podcast. I do all the episodes. I do the timestamps for a reason. Just go to the next chapter of this episode if you have not seen the last episode of Power. <laughs> but then you're the not a, okay. But let me say this: you're not a real fan if you didn't watch it by now. Some people got jobs; they got things. They like, do life be lifing, like, you know. So they might not. Life, they might not know what we're about of, to tell them. Okay, right now. but that's one of the shows that you make time for if you love it. We're the type of people that if we love a show, we're going to make some time for it. Now, I'm not saying you're going to watch it the first night it comes out. Because sometimes, you know me, I'll fall asleep. All right, you said... But we're going to finish it. The fact that it ended, right? Let's let's go back to that. The fact that it ended. That's a sad thing. but Devastating. I always tell you... Because that was our favorite book that's still on. When we first started watching Power, it was coming on on a Saturday. It was. Like, we used to... I remember you used to cook dinner... And we were summer in the summertime too. I remember yeah. people would come over, we would watch it, and yeah. then we would go back outside and hit the street and see what's yes. going on. So to go for a decade, to go with six show, six seasons with, with Amari Hardwick, and and he was phenomenal on the show. He Absolutely. laid the foundation Absolutely. for everything with that show. So f- to go from Amari and then go to um to Michael Gary. Rainey, yeah. Michael Rainey Jr. To go to him, and then he carried the show for a few more seasons. They did about ten seasons. They spun off the well, power with the, the the Tommy joint. They spun away to the, the joint with Tariq and Mary and them. They spun away to Raising Canaan. So they had a hell of a run. I think we definitely got to give it up for them with that. They had an incredible run, and we still watch it to this day. But me being like a, we're fans of TV. We're we're we we like we, we grew like. up in the internet, but we're not internet. Web series. Uh, we didn't grow up binge people. watching. Yeah. We grew up with sitcoms and like and you waited shows that come on every it. week, yes. and you had to watch. We it didn't up. grow up binge watching things. So, like when I think of uh, shows like Power, I put them in the category with The Wire and Snowfall. You know, like show, shows like that, right? People might say when they start talking about greatest shows all the time, they want to talk about Breaking Bad and The Walking Dead. Well, I'm gonna say How to Get the Away Wire. with Murder. You know, I love How to Get Away with Murder. murder. <laughs> Some people might say Scandal, and you know what I'm saying. You got people that watched everything, uh, yeah. Grey's Anatomy, everything. Yeah. But I feel like the way that Snowfall ended, it ended how it was supposed to end. I feel like The Wire ended. The wire ended in a way where they could have kept it going with the kids. They could have dragged it. But I feel like that's but how they, they didn't. but that's how they ended power. It's still open ended that you kind of like if there's a spin-off, it wouldn't surprise me seeing the end of how the way they ended it. That's uh, my thing. So speaking of the way they ended it, right? I personally feel, and you could tell me if I'm wrong, I personally feel if they killed ghosts, right? And if Tariq is everything that his father was, which exactly what y'all turned the show into, he's basically what everything he didn't want to be, which was exactly like his father. He was. He was exactly like his father. Yes. Tariq was supposed to die. I- I'm sorry. Tariq was. If Ghost had to die, and that was the incre- we would have never thought Tariq was going to be the one. We watched the episode and Sax was going to the the the. Uh, to truth and Dre was going to truth and this one was going, everybody was going to truth and you don't know who was going to kill him. To see Tariq kill him, it spun it in a, in a way that we never would have thought, right? But the way that it ended, like Kane left with the money and Brayton just, I right, cool, man. He just walked down the steps after he told him we're not going to be partners it, no more. That, that's what lets you know that they're going to do something else with it. They left it open-ended. Kane really, lived, Drew lived, Diana lived, 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 Carter lives. We still don't know who the hell is Denise, his wife. We don't know what's this vendetta that he had with everybody. It, it, I feel like if the show was ending... Let's go out with a bang. But like, that's what? how you know it's not the power universe never dies. You you prove my point. Oh, you work for Courtney Kemp now. <laughs> I'm 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 not doing this with her. She said the power universe never it dies. It never dies. Lord have mercy. It never dies. They're gonna keep it going. I I will say, I will say this though. I'm very disappointed that we didn't get more out of the Senator Tate character. Oh my God, we seen that Tate. was one of my favorite characters um, on this the, last season of Power, on Power. On this last season of Power, we seen Tate and Tasha 
three, three times. Tasha was working in Family Dollar. And then she was up in that little ass one bedroom apartment. I don't even know if she got custody of Yaz no more. We didn't see grandma. They would we didn't grandma see, wasn't um, in the budget. She wasn't in the budget. The lady that helped uh Tasha uh hide away. Where was Elvin from the Cosby show? The lawyer. Yeah, where was he at? I don't I, look, shout out to 50 Cent. Courtney. Shout out to Courtney Kemp, stars, everybody. Amazing show. We Power love was it. an amazing show, and it's going down in the books as and, one of the greatest shows and ever. Please. I just feel you just we, wanted more. We just feel we expected more out of the finale of something that we had invested so much time. I know we spend a lot of time on this, but this is a uh, well, so what? this We're is fans a this is a critical this is thing in television right now. One of the only good shows that was left, and to be honest. Um, we still watch Power to this day. Yeah, some nights we go in the in the in the, in the bedroom. I want to say season two. We and put three. on season two or three, and we just like fall <laughs> asleep like, to a few of those episodes. I mean, but that's we how good them it was. So much we know the lines. We invest. You know what it is. We invested so much we did. equity we with did. these characters. We I feel did. like, and we for did. us to for the show to end, and it's like we still have so many questions. That's it. Because when the other Power ended, we didn't have questions. They were answered. Yeah. They were answered. They yeah. burned Dre up in jail. Oh, my we God. We know what happened to 2-Bit. We know what You know what I mean? It wasn't a whole bunch of questions. 2-Bit. Oh, my God. Angie. You know, we, we knew what happened to people. So it wasn't too many questions that were unanswered about the majority of the major characters in yeah. the show. This one, the major characters were left open-ended. They took out people that you didn't really care too much about. So that's yeah, what kind of had you like. Eh. I just, look, I love Power. Shout out to everybody that has power. something to do with it, but it could have ended better. I just feel Power could have ended better, but it was an amazing show. I don't think there has ever been another show that had that many spinoffs. That, that many we spinoffs and a oh ten year God. run. Like yeah. Power had like yeah. a, a good. Most 10 year shows just run. have one good, you know, one good run alone, but they had so many spinoffs that we we watched them all. Yeah, it, it was, it's, and we still watching them. I just, I just wish it would have ended a little better, man. But I just know that there's more. If you haven't, if you haven't, <laughs> there's more. There's you know what more. I'm saying? Jump in the comments. Make sure you like. Tell us what you think comment, about that. Share, subscribe. That but jump in the comments finale. right now and tell us what y'all thought about the finale of Power. Yeah, yeah. man, it's, it's 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 a dub. It was man. it was a it was a sad. It was just sad hearing the news that officially was leaving. I yeah, mean, and then y'all, the way y'all marked Monet out. It's like y'all could have, Kane could have died. Drew could have. So, they took Monet out. Tariq like was Cleo. supposed to. Tariq was supposed to die, man. Tariq was supposed to die, man. I think we're gonna see Tariq again, or Tyreek. Maybe he's gonna come back as Tyreek. Nah, you know. All right, look, check this out, right? <laughs> so on to other things that aggravated me in the last week or so, right? So this Kim Porter memoir. This, this is where it gets serious. The now, all jokes stops. aside, all jokes aside, the Kim stops. Porter memoir, right? This is where it stops. So. I don't usually curse on this podcast. I try to keep I try to keep Jane after dark like explicit but not with explicit vulgar language. I try to be respectable to the viewers, well, you know what I'm saying? You have to have vulgar language to express Yeah, I know I know we have a lot of but viewers that they're not here for the the J Mill battle rap stuff. This is something that we build in and it's kind of outside of that. So it's a lot of people that watch this this show and they're not really here for the battle rap rap, loud, obnoxious, uh, metaphorical, sarcastic J. Mills. They just here for the cool dude who sit up here with his fiance and they kick it and they but just have regular But sometimes things combo. take you there. But, but this right here, this one, this conversation, this topic, all right, check this out. This white man, and I'm not saying white man because if he was black, there would be no difference. Now, People in podcast world, I'm getting so ill with the podcasting. I'm going to tell y'all that what I just said was a setup for what I'm about to say. But I just wanted to let y'all know how nice we getting with this, right? Because I could have just said this out the gate. It wouldn't have been no different if he was black. Do you know? Not do you know. Did you know Kim Porter? Did you have a relationship with Kim Porter, Chris Todd? Did Chris Todd have a relationship with Kim Porter? Was he friends with Kim Porter? Did this memoir come from somebody that was close to Kim Porter? These diaries, the flash drive, the journal, whatever you got your hands on, 
you keep saying there are other people that have given me the right to this. It sounds like it's some money behind this. Probably was some money behind the, to ruin Diddy, the same thing. And I'm not taking up for Diddy. But it's the same people that probably put the money up for Cassie's defense. Because Cassie didn't have money to fight that case like that. Or to draw up the paperwork. Now, I'm, now I know now I'm going into conspiracy theories mode. But this is just me being 100% real. Chris Todd does not know anybody that was like that close to Kim Porter that could co-sign and say, nah, what he has is true. No, nobody is saying that. Aside from that, this is this is like the ether of everything. Why, when Chris Todd put this Kim Porter memoir out, did he put it under somebody named Jamal T. Willard or something like that? Which he tried to tie to Tupac. And then he said, I've done many investigative cases. I have a history of this, this, that. So stand on that, my guy. If you got a history of doing homicide cases or if you just got a history of doing this, stand on your name. Your name is everything in that world. So why would why would I put a, a book out and... I'm putting a book out, but it's a memoir of Elvis. I'm putting a memoir out, and it's a <laughs> I'm putting a memoir out on Elvis, but I'm gonna put it out under a name called Peter Jankovic. Well, this is why I have a problem. And it's like, but why did you make it Jamal? You made the name Jamal because you knew people like me and you, minorities, people of. African American descent, the same thing as Kim Porter, we would run to it if we see a name like Jamal. That right there was the total disrespect. The fact that their kids, uh, Puff and Kim Porter kids, said our parent wasn't working on no memoir. Al B. Shore said she wasn't working on this. Her best friends are saying this. So for him to keep saying the people, it, there are other people involved in this and I have the rights to move forward with this. Well, if you ain't got the rights from her estate, her family, or her kids, who's giving you the okay to go with this book and not stand on it as Chris Todd? You put the book out on, under a black a black name, so maybe black people wouldn't look at it like that. Now, this is why I wanted to tell y'all I'm getting super nice at podcasting. I said all of that to say the same thing that I said in the beginning. It doesn't matter if it was a black person or if it was a white person. It doesn't matter if it was Chris or if it was Jamal. If you didn't know Kim Porter, and this isn't something that you know for sure that came from Kim Porter, what made you throw it on Amazon and try to get paid off of it as soon as they took Diddy in? Well, this is my this is my this is my whole thing. I'm not a fan of people making or creating uh, memoirs about people that. They never met. In they life, ever. Ever met in life. They have no connection to the people closest to them. Family, friends, kids, co-workers, spouse, whatever. And then to try to capitalize off somebody's death and the people that's surrounding them and their legacy. I have a major problem with that. I am one of those people that think you should write your story, God forbid, before you leave. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't know when we're going to go. None of us know. But I always say it's better if you can tell your own story. So I salute people that do. Because to me, no one will tell your story better than you. So I think it's disrespectful for somebody to tell a story about somebody at a time like this. When her kids are going through something like this. Her family members, her friends. So to tarnish her name in a mix of that trial that we haven't even gotten to yet, it's crazy to me. And then for him to sit and do interviews and try to defend why, and he really still isn't telling why, and he's helping lie. behind Chris him. Chris Todd looked crazy it's on that just, Art of Dialogue. It's just interview. horrible to me. And then to he try to crazy. use somebody's name, yeah, like, Jamal, and try to tie that to a Tupac. Oh like, it's just God, nonsense. Man. Like, I'm not supporting it. That, I, man, I, that I just, man didn't know Kim Porter. I really, and I really, just to sit, you have to think about, um, 
the facts that's given to you. And I said to you from the beginning, I was like, well, who's to say that he keeps claiming this flash drive? How do we know that this flash drive even, even exists? How do we know that he got a flash drive from somebody? How do we know he just didn't type these things up himself? Like, we don't know. You don't know in 2024. There's so much AI and digital things going on. We have no idea. Uh, Nothing leads me to believe anything that he's saying. I don't even like the way that he was trying to explain himself. It's like he getting like snazzy about it. Like yeah, defensive, he get, very he getting defensive. like real. He getting like real, like man, whatever. Like the people, the people that that are behind me, I have the green light to move forward with this. And it's like, hold on, you got the green light to move forward with, from with who? what? From, from who? who? She's right. dead. Right. Nobody that right. is close to her or in her family. Gave okay you this. any sort of okay, and nobody's standing on it saying that this is not one person. This is a go. This is this is a green light right here. And so the fact that you put it out around the same time that Diddy is going through the stuff that he's going through lets us know you were trying to capitalize off that. Yeah, that's cool. If you had it did this like on the anniversary of her death or something like that, it would have made it different. Not that I would agree with it anyway, but it still would have made it different. You just made it look like you was trying to capitalize yeah, it just, on something. It just looked corny. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. I, 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 I don't really want to say no names, that. but it's a lot of people out here doing the same thing. They are. They are. They are. They are. It's a lot of people it's trying to capitalize It's a lot of people. We was, on, we, was looking on, uh, we was looking at TV the other night before we was falling asleep, and we in the bed just trying to scroll and find something, and we going through different apps and platforms and all of this and we saw the, the downfall of Diddy and I'm like babe I think we watched this I think this came out a few months ago and it was like nah this is like something the else. downfall of Diddy drugs parties and freak offs part two it's like well, they, the other one said June 20 something this one say 9 20 something they got a whole Another it's one. three months. Like they ain't even let the other one. It's and it said crazy. sponsored. And it said sponsored on the homepage of the Fire TV. And, and the crazy that. part is we're talking about um, these documentaries about a case that hasn't even seen it, haven't even gotten a trial date yet. It don't. And he hasn't been convicted. He hasn't even had a trial date set yet. I feel like in the world we live in. It's crazy. It don't matter. It, it doesn't even. It's crazy. It doesn't even matter um, about the reality of the situation anymore. I feel like the reality of the situation, that's not exciting. That don't, that don't sell. That don't give us enough clicks. You know, like, we say this all the time. I must just be on one this week, so, but I'm, I'm, this is how I'm feeling. Okay. We say this all the time. We heard about Jimmy Iovine one time. And then I never heard about it no more. I've been to. hearing about Puff ever since. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not comparing nothing because I don't want people to think that we be up here defending Diddy. Anyone. We can't anyone. defend. <laughs> I cannot defend anything that we saw or anything that we see in or hearing. So right. it's not even up to me. But it's just when I sit and I think about it, somebody else gave this example about Hugh Hefner and this and that. It's like, well, damn, I watch The Secrets of Playboy. You, you, you watch me watch that. So secrets of Playboy, the Secrets of Hustler, the Secrets of Penthouse. Right. All of them little uh, shows, I watch them. Right. People died in the Playboy Mansion. Like, it was a lot of, it was girl, it was women that said they got drugged in the Playboy Mansion in the Bill Cosby case. Yes. But yes. we didn't call those freak-offs. We didn't say that these women that Hugh Hefner was putting in a Playboy magazine and moving them into his crib that was coming from other places and their parents probably didn't even okay it. They just left home and went to go or live with Hugh Hefner and be a bunny. Well, some of them did. We didn't look at that as sex trafficking or he holding somebody past they 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 will. Well the people that did they didn't bring up charges. We didn't we didn't we didn't look at it like that. You know what I'm saying? We didn't look at Studio 54, like it was freak offs. It wasn't nobody getting arrested in there. But, and I'm not trying to say it's just because it was a black man, because they just, Weinstein, Epstein, they all dragged them the same way. R. Kelly. So it's not like it's a black, or they coming for the black man. Nah, they just coming for somebody who got caught out there doing some wild shit. <laughs> like, that's just it. It don't, it don't have do nothing to like do with change, white but and I black. Feel like they, they but the money is, yeah, the, the fact do, that he has the money that he has. They do change certain things up for certain people. I'm 100% yeah. agreeing with you with that. Um, I'm not defending anyone. I'm not a lawyer. Um, sometimes I do yeah, think I work for law and order. 
Yeah, we got a little of uh, Detective Mister and Mrs. Mills. Yeah, we got a little we something on there. Dun, dun. Yeah, we do. We do. We got a little dun 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 dun. That's the little drum created by Dick Wolf. I mean, sometimes we think you know, we think we work with Finn and, and Liv. <laughs> so I mean. We do solve cases here, but I, I'm totally with you. Um, it, it's just crazy to see how everybody's trying to capitalize. <laughs> Remember the like other that. day we was watching something on TV, and oh, make yeah, make sure y'all go to poetdepot.com too. I didn't say that all show, so I just looked around. I was like, hold on, we got a little got a little prop yeah. going on right yeah. here. Poetdepot.com. Make sure you jump over there, get some vibes. You know what I'm saying? And go to eight and nine.com. Yeah. Use Jana 20. Yes. Get you 20% off, you know. But hold on, what was I saying? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, dun, we dun, were watching dun, something dun, the other day. Dun, dun, While you were doing dun, the law and order. Oh, we was watching something the other day. Law and crime. I don't know who running law and crime. Oh my God. But they are the new court TV. They like C SPAN. Let me just say something about <laughs> law, law and crime. crime is wild. When you're talking about consistency, law and crime be having the listen, updates on listen, everything. Listen. Oh, man. Law who's and behind crime. law and crime? Who's behind that? I need to know. MSNBC the, is somebody behind law and crime. Who is the programming manager over there? Oh my God. Because they must work 24 7. I mean, there's a new episode around the clock. They just live they have breaking all news. day. Oh. They are alive all day. If we you've never wild. heard of Law and Crime, please yeah, go, go on to YouTube. YouTube. They got all of They like if court TV. If you're looking for updates, it's the new court TV. I know a lot of people and that don't know what you... And if you're too young to know what court, court TV, TV is, is, go to Netflix and watch the Menendez Brothers joint. They was court TV. Live on court TV. Menendez Brothers and OJ, they was like... Live. They was wild. All right, so hold on. We... I came back. We was watching something and they asked Clive Davis. <laughs> Yo, they asked Clive oh Davis. Asked Clive Davis about Diddy. That man said, Who? <laughs> Who? Who is he? Who is he talking about? Who? I said, I know he didn't do that. I know Clive didn't. I know they not I mean, doing Clive. I know these people. Are not about to do it like this. Well, he's in, he's up there in age. So now, you, so now you're telling me Clive Davis doesn't actually remember. I never said that. Who Sean Combs is? I just said he's up there. A in man age. that he had a 50-50 joint venture with that he knew for almost thirty years. I don't know what just happened with the light. I feel like there's some Halloween vibes going on because it felt like it just did a little. Maybe it's the orange. Why? Maybe it's the orange. But you know, we're we're all getting up there in age. Clive Davis said, who? Clive Davis. That was crazy. That was very, very. That was very, I'd have made very, millions with you. That was very, very crazy. I'd have made millions with you, yo. That was, very, very that was like Jimmy Iovine walking past game at the game, at the Lakers game. That was crazy. If I like that was crazy. And I, I don't I don't got no smoke for Jimmy Iovine this episode. I know it sounds like I'm I'm I, I smoke for Jimmy. I have no smoke for Jimmy Iovine. I have no beef with Jimmy Iovine. I don't know that man. But to see him walk past the game at a Lakers game or some wherever he was, I think they was in LA. But it was the fact that they caught it on camera. <laughs> nah. Even if they didn't catch it on camera, but it was, I could have caught it with my own no, eyes no, if I was at the game. I would have been like, nah, that, been, come on, that's wild. It would have been hearsay. But the fact that we actually have footage to click and watch it happen. That's the part that's like. I'm gonna be real with y'all, man. Y'all gotta put a little wow. more respect on Chuck name too, wow. man. Get the game deserves a lot more respect as a West Coast staple. Legend. Yeah, West Coast We're staple. Not take that away. West mm -hmm. Coast legend. Absolutely. Game never put out a whack album. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like I'm back for a while. Yeah, so shout the shout the game, most definitely. We was, running, we was both running the New York streets when he was running around in New yeah, York. Yeah, man. Like I was in the club when game threw the shit in the crowd, the chain in the crowd. I seen that exit. club exit too. Yeah, it, it was wild. He, he, he was outside. Yeah, game was game was outside at a dangerous time too. He was outside in New York. Yeah. With Black Wall Street. I remember game so I was in hack and sack. Real far from where the roaches and rats is. <laughs> I was like, oh game know about hack and sack. It's crazy. He active. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to everybody. Stay safe. Stay out the way. I yes. feel like a, we in a, we living in like a real social media world where <sighs> saying the wrong, like how we talking about the, the, the Clive Davis thing. And it's like, um, uh, who are, the, the Chris Todd interview on the Art of Dialogue. And 
You wake up one day and then it's 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 Gene Dill. And then you wake up the next day and then Jaguar Wright, like, hold on, let me my mic is on too. And it's like, this is too much. This is too much. It, it it's too much on the internet right now. And I feel like, like prime example, we could do a whole hour long interview, right? But if I say the wrong thing about the wrong person in this next two minute window, right? They'll take 45 seconds of that and that will go viral. Yeah. None of these other 16 episodes that we did they before this, none of the topics we did, Happy New Year, Juneteenth, your birthday, my birthday, kids, graduations, holidays, no. none of that will matter. They'll take a piece of it and then it's like they're going to spin us. Yeah. And then our podcast could go from being something that people just watch just for a cool, good vibe. It's like, well, what's the what's the whole point of J Mills podcast with his fiance? It's just a cool vibe. It's just them in their crib and late we're night, talking about and they just talking about the same thing that me and my girl talk about. That's why we watch. Or it. we talk about things that people are thinking about, um, and they wish somebody would bring up. Yeah, because it's so much nonsense, and sometimes we just want to address things that. It doesn't have to be funny. It doesn't have to be sad. Mm -mm. It doesn't have to be, you know, the most heart-wrenching thing that we heard this week. Mm -mm. And I didn't want to serious us but out with the whole but Kim it's, Porter But memoir it's just sometimes you just want to hear that. other things that are going on, not the nastiest thing, mm -mm. not the uh, not the most the topic of discussion on the gossip Look, site. Look, fam, I'm know? not coming in here to talk about Cardi being offset and no. who Cardi... You can might have had it. sex with while she was pregnant. That's none of my business. That's none of my business, honestly. I don't even feel comfortable talking to you about who Cardi B it's was letting pop while she was pregnant. That is none of with. my business, like, and I'm not concerned with that. There's far more other things we can discuss. Not saying, not saying that that's not a conversation or a topic that people talk about, but I feel like that's not now that we're getting into this point and we've been doing this for a little while now, I feel like the content that we create is the content that we chop up. You know and what I'm that saying? You the, wanna, the, 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 you the, the, be episode, the, the episodes of what we're going to create our reels from. And you want to be the... That, Short form content You want to take stuff. these things and they be the topic of your discussion. Create your own clickbait. Nori told me create your own clickbait. Yeah. They can't chop up what you don't give them. Right. So if me and Dana come sit in front of these microphones and we just have dope conversations every week, every week and a half, if you here for like the gossip and the messiness, this is not the podcast. You know where to find it. But if you just here for the vibe that me and my lady got, and it's like, man, me and my girl got that vibe, or me and my homie got that vibe, right. or me and my friend got that vibe. I got a girl, me and me her and is cool just like that. that or me and I know I know a dude. He not my man, but me and him, we we, we kind of vibe just yesterday. like Dana yeah. and Jay vibe out. Yeah. So that's that's it. That's it. That, that's our lane. Our lane is this. Our lane isn't. Uh, trying to go viral because I know this may sound crazy, but going viral that ain't going to change your life in the long term. Going viral is for the moment. You can't build. You can't build. Uh, and I know we just off right now because none of these are topics what we've been talking about for the last couple of minutes. But that's the whole point of it. It's just good conversation. You can't build up. A, a, Community. Uh, not, not community. You can't build up, like, you can't build up the strength to go viral. Like, you can't train and get ready to go viral. It's like, all right, you went viral, and then what? Because now you got to keep going viral. Now, once you go viral, you chasing that. You chasing right. the views. You chasing the streams, or you chasing the likes and all of that. But then when it get down to the bottom of it, it's like, all right, well, if you trying to go viral, what did when you went viral, what did you get out of it? Well, my thing is we're human. So like did you get some sponsorships? Did you get some ads? But this or platform did you just is just waking up posting content. Our platform is day? not for that. Our platform is we're human. We experience things just like other people. We're not pretending to be something and that we're just, not. And you bring it we to the We don't want to talk about things that we're not comfortable with talking about. We're not. That's just what it is. I mean, if there's if if 
this is not what you decide to listen to, that's fine. There's other podcasts. There's millions of podcasts you can listen to. We're we still want to talk. We're, we're fans of a lot of podcasts, and some of them are just not for me. There's some I tried to listen to, and they're just not for me, and that's okay. And this might not be for, for you, you, and, and that's, that's fine. okay, that's fine. too. It's not the, it's not the, it, everything ain't for, for everybody. everybody. You know what I'm saying? Every okay. conversation isn't for every ear. Well, my thing is, you know? I just want to leave a mark on people that I felt comfortable leaving. One day I'm going to leave the earth, and this will still be here, so along with memories that people have of me, I want them to be stuff that I was comfortable with talking about, stuff that I was comfortable on giving my opinion about, and that's it. I'm human. Sometimes it's going to be funny. Sometimes it's going to be sad, and sometimes it's going to be serious. But these are things that I, that were makings of me that I felt comfortable with. I don't mm. want to put anything into the universe that I'm not comfortable putting my name on, not at this age, at this big age, as they would say now. At 41, that's not where I'm at. You know, so that's why we discuss the topics that we discuss. Um, and before we um, wrap up, I do want to say this. Um, the news did come out that Sissy Houston passed. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. It I do want to so say that. so many people passed. So many away. people passed. Oh and God. that one came to Rest mind. Rest in peace. Um, just thinking about all the people that you were naming, like Clive Davis, and not to cut you off, but I just want to say that her legacy lives on forever through her daughter's music, her music, and just the way she carried herself. So that kind of ties into what I was saying about leaving your legacy. You can say what you want about the Houstons, but they carried themselves to a certain, mm -hmm. <laughs> to a certain beat. They, greatness. The greatness. Like, so my thing is you want to be remembered like that. You want to be held to that standard. And for her to live 91 years and accomplish the things that she accomplished, she birthed one of the greatest ever. And she raised her a certain way. So we hold her to a certain standard. Mm -hmm. And regardless of the highs and lows that, you know, Whitney went through, we still hold her to a certain level. So that's what I mean about, you know, only doing what you feel comfortable with doing. And I think their legacy is amazing. I had the honor of meeting her at church one day when I was a little girl about Check Journey's age. <laughs> um, my mom and I met her at um, New Hope in Newark. We went to a youth explosion night way back at like 94, 95, I want to say. And we met her in the elevator coming upstairs. And my mom was like, you know who that is? And I was like, I kind of looked and I was nervous like Journey. I was like, uh, yeah. She was like, that's Whitney's mom. And she smiled. And my mom said, can you just pray for me and my daughter? And she was like, absolutely. I'll pray for you guys. And she smiled. And I just thought that was so nice. And yeah. I always remember that. So I just always have the, that memory of her, of being a praying, God-fearing woman and just holding herself to a certain standard. So when I say you only want to do things you're comfortable with, I feel like they stood on that. Yeah. So that's just something you want to take with you. And everybody that's listening, please do things that you feel comfortable with doing and don't be afraid to be yourself. You don't have to fall into the nonsense that's going on. Mm -hmm. You don't have to write books about people you didn't know. Tell oh your my story. God, man. We always talk about that. Tell your story. One day he's going to tell his story. He's working on that. Yo, I, we um, was just talking, to, I was that, just talking just today about taking a vacation so I just and feel working like, on my book. I just feel like it's so important for us to tell our own story so you don't run into people like Chris Todd. And then your kids have to deal with that. Yo, Chris Todd, check this out. You know, forget it, yo. <laughs> because, it, yo. you know, her kids didn't even get to tell her story. So I, I've been on him about telling his story. And he's been on me about telling my story for sometimes, so you many know, reasons. You don't realize, um, sometimes I think, I've been moving around for like three decades. Like I can honestly say for like the last three decades of my life, I've probably been moving around, like airplanes, being places I shouldn't have been, seeing things I probably shouldn't have been seeing, experiencing things in the industry I probably shouldn't have been experiencing, not like anything sexual or freaky or people trying to touch me, but I just mean like I probably shouldn't have been in nightclubs at the age I was in there. I probably shouldn't have been at Wet Willie's in Miami on Ocean Drive when I should have been taking midterms, you know, but... I've seen a lot of those things and they bring me to a point now where it's like I could speak from um um I could speak from a reflective standpoint. Like a lot of things with me now in life 
I'm not even trying to, um, you're trying to see new things, but I'm not in a rush to see things anymore. I'm more reflecting on the things that I've been through in life and trying to see, like, did it help me or did it hurt me? Like, did I, was that, it's like the accountability stage where now you understand things, you understand places where you went wrong and where you want to go right. You understand where it's like, same thing you were saying about, like, leaving a legacy. It's like, if you know, if you know a lot of the things that you've done in the past is already legendary, sometimes you can feel like, I'm good, it's already etched in stone. Like, But a lot of times, if, if you're the type of person that you feel like there's always more that you could, like, just being great, like, there's always more that you could do. Like, we see pictures of Kobe in the pajamas with the cast on, shooting free throws after the game when he lost. But there's always more to do. You know, like, but to some people, they don't feel like that. Like, how I, could, how I said, I've been, I went to Wet Willies three decades ago, and I probably shouldn't have been there. I should have been taking midterms. To some people, it's like, oh, you think you're doing something? I've been doing that, young boy. I've been getting money. You've never heard me talk like that. It's never like... Oh, I've been doing that. That ain't nothing to me. I'm still motivated to do to do more, but not motivated to do it in a way where it's like, hey, look at me. Like, look what I'm doing. And I think that comes from having a history of doing something. Like, for instance, if you are like if you you're, you've always been pretty, I don't have to say you always been a fly girl, design it out, because you wasn't. You didn't always wear designer stuff. I didn't always have designer stuff. I didn't always have diamonds and jewelry. I wore silver at one time <laughs> when I, I was a kid. Stuff. I was still When I was a, a little kid. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's just the aura. It's just the aura of knowing that there's more that you could do. Or, yeah, I, I might be pretty, but that don't mean I got to wear all designer stuff to make me, to make me a sexy. Like, that don't mean that I got to sell 10 million records to feel like, I'm better than everybody that could rap like me. That's just that's just the aura, even if it's not real. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if it's not like a real thing, I just feel like in this era that we live in, if you've been doing something for so long, and this is all tying into like the Sissy Tyson thing and like uh, Whitney, I said Sissy Tyson, Sissy Houston and Whitney Houston and everything. It's like when you leave a legacy, they could say what they they could say what they want about Whitney Houston. You could have all the drug jokes you want in the world. That don't top. I believe the children of the future. Well, you know what I'm the saying? Way that she held herself on a certain standard. You could say what you but want about Michael Jackson. Legacy. That don't change. That's heal the legacy. world. That that's don't. His, so his we always say, long as the good outweigh the bad. And Absolutely. I don't. I don't want to sound like I'm rambling, but it's like the whole thing about the going viral and and all of that. You can go viral, but what if it's something that you didn't mean to go viral for? Most of the time, people do go viral with stuff they didn't. Mean but now you got to keep it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want us to go viral for talking about something that we don't normally talk about. Because now we got to come in here every week and you got to come out your shell. Now you got to come out of your shell of who you are. Not come out of your shell of like you're shy and you don't speak or nothing like that. Because you, you talk just as much as I talk. But I mean, come out of your shell of who you really are as a person. Well, I'm like, not doing that. I'm not, I'm not, um, at this point in my life, I'm not doing anything and I don't want to promote anyone to do anything that takes them out of who they truly are. Um, whether if it's a job, it's people, it's family, you know, whatever it is, I don't want anything to take me out of my mental space that's comforting to me. Um, you do have to protect your swear and that comes into swear. Your square, it no, goes I know into what you any... See, we both rambling. I call it Sister Tyson. You said protect your square. I don't know what's Your going square, on. it it comes... It 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 goes with everything in life. Mm -hmm. So I don't... I don't... I wouldn't tell anyone to do anything that makes them go out of that. Whether that's the kids, family, friends, you, whoever. I don't want to do it. I don't want you to do it. So if that takes us away from who we really are, then we don't need to do it. It wasn't meant for us to do it. Anything yeah. that stresses you or take you out of your normal being, it's not for you. So that's what I mean about that legacy. And then you, you leave it up to people like Chris Todd and they're making books because they're trying to design you to be somebody that you're not. You you, you get what I'm saying? So Yo, that's did, the type how, of did, but that's how, the type of stuff that bothers let him me. Get that off? But that's the type of stuff <laughs> that bothers me 
Because if you don't tell your own story, you leave that door open for somebody to make up a story. So even if we don't love the stories that people tell, it's their story. You know, we might laugh at, for example, we laugh at like the Lifetime movies, but these are the stories they gave them. Now the Murdoch murders. <laughs> these are the story. <laughs> these are the stories that people gave them about them. I'm not laughing at the murders. I was not so. Who are we to judge? This is the this is the life they live. Yeah. If Lifetime offered me a a movie deal, I'm telling my story. So get ready. Nah, remember the Lifetime. I'm telling joint? my story. Was it the Lifetime, the Leah joint? That the one. Day, the I Dame cannot Dash get it. that they had in that Once one. Once again, she wasn't here to tell her story. That's what I'm saying. Okay, compare it to the Tony Braxton one. Totally different. Tony told her story. Yeah, I remember the Michelle joint where uh, NWA had on the Air Force Ones, and it looked like they was in Georgia. She told her story. Whether <laughs> you agree with it or not, she told her story. Oh man. So yeah. We so, just we just we just chopping it up with y'all. You know what's crazy? A lot of these weren't even topics. No, they weren't topics. But I think I, that's just the beauty of Chris Todd ruffled my feathers, so I just had to. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't mean to serious y'all out <clears throat> this episode. Maybe we'll joke a little more next episode. We're going to joke a little bit more. But he had me hot. He had me hot. He, he had me highly upset. Don't you know tell my saying? story. Let me tell my story. Um, and one day you'll tell your story. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working on the book. I'm I'm working on the book. Well, this is what I'm doing with my book. I'm getting... Uh, 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 uh. You're not going to tell it. You're right. Thank you. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. You know what I'm saying? Working on a few things, but I'm not going to say nothing. You're right. So we're going we gonna to wrap this up. We got to, uh, we're going to start. We, we don't want to drag the episodes out. So if you notice, we're doing episodes. They're a little bit shorter, but we're trying to knock them out more and keep more content, more, uh, more topics flowing through the okay. episodes instead of dragging. Everybody's been asking. Topics. When are you guys yeah. doing another episode? Yeah, so. What's up? Y'all taking too long. Yeah, that's how we banging them out. You so know, we're here. Make sure you go to poetdepot.com. Get you some potent yes. vibes. Make sure you go to 8 and 9com Use you our code Jaina20. Get your 20% yes. off. And make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe to J Mills yes. TV. I am J Mills. And I am Dana. And this is Jaina After Dark. I love you. We love each other. And you should love each other, too. And this is our story. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>